all about applications. So I've spoken a bit about applications and services and such, but let's expand upon that a little bit. So applications are the software and the services on a computer uh, or device of some kind, some sort of networking device. Uh, and as I mentioned, the top three layers of the OSI model, uh, the application, uh, the presentation, and the session layers. Uh, are all combined in one in the TCP IP model. And that's because usually applications handle those three layers uh, as one before they pass it on to the transport and so. Uh, so the presentation layer we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, it handles, so the application sends its data to the presentation layer and the presentation layer converts the data to make it useful to the layers below. Uh, it also compresses the data if it needs to uh, does encryption and decryption uh, and and file formats are, are is a good example of the presentation layer so you know your uh, format of the files that the application uses uh, file extensions or something like that um, and say encryption as I mentioned things like that that's all handled by presentation layer and then it presents that to the session layer and the session layer creates and tears down connections or sessions essentially so from one device to another it keeps it creates and stores and keeps track of those sessions that it's going to initiate and continue to obtain and and then tear down uh, from one device to another. So that's really what the presentation session layer do and they since they're so integral to the uh, what the application is itself you know it's kind of hard to break out the presentation and session layers from an application since each application might have different needs on you know the, the file formats and encryption layer le levels that it needs and how it wants to have a session created to another device that, that's usually why it's handled by uh, the application layer. Uh, some of the protocols I've mentioned actually have uh, th they have the same name for all three of those layers. Um, so for, for example uh, like for Telnet. So we have Telnet. Telnet is a protocol It's also an application and it's also a service. So it's the application, it's the protocol on how you communicate, uh, which is kind of like your presentation layer, uh, and then it's also your service. So how do we uh, continually run and, and create sessions and such, so it's, it's all three of those. Uh, also, there's SCP, which is similar uh, in that it has all three of those under the same name, uh, Secure Copy. Uh, SCP is actually its own special protocol as well as the application. Uh, same with TFTP. Uh, sometimes it's different. You know, these three, they actually have the same name for all three of those uh, service protocol and application. Sometimes it, it changes depending on what it is. Uh, but they're very common and you'll see them a lot and that's why I wanted to mention them. Uh, let's show a good example of some services and applications and such. So if you own your computer, if you actually, if you go to your task manager, if you're on Windows for example, if you take a look at the processes that are running, those are applications. Uh, they're applications, they are services, um, they we refer to them as processes, but they can be either an ongoing service, uh, such as, uh, let's see, we'll say VCD daemon. So like VCD daemon is an ongoing service, but some of these uh, are one-time applications. So 
like uh, Cam Recorder is an application, but it's not really a service because it doesn't run in the background. It's just running now because I'm recording. Uh, and you can see these. And if you're on uh, Linux, it would be uh, PS-EF usually or PSAUX, something like that. We'll show you your, your processes that are running and then some of those may be daemons or services and some of those may be one-time applications. Uh, we can also, which we'll see in the next few videos a little bit, uh, you can do this, netstat-an. This will give you a list of all of the ports that we're listening on. So when you talk about the transport layer coming up, uh, it'll show what connections we have open and we're listening on. And we take a look here at what's being listening, what, uh, <laughs> what it's listening on, uh, and you can see what ports we're listening on and then what protocol. So if we have port 443 that we're listening on for TCP, well, one of these processes, most likely a service, is l creating that connection, is creating that open listen state. Uh, so we'll get into that more with the transport layer uh, and how services and applications open up these ports for listening so that we can create these uh, communications from one side to the other. And uh, you can also do netstat on Linux as well. Uh, I mentioned the client server model. So what we do currently What we do currently is uh, use the client server model mostly. We, we started out with the mainframes and computers, and now we've moved to, uh, in the past 10, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, we've switched over to a client server model, and now we're kind of moving back towards the mainframe with, with virtualization and VMware and virtual systems and such like that. But uh, current use is a client server model. So you have PCs, and then we have a server in the middle, use the big server, then we have the clients, and then the clients will be running applications. And the server will be running uh, what we call a daemon, which is another name for a service. And the clients are going to talk to that daemon or service in order to send and receive data uh, that needs to work. And then the service will process that, do whatever work needs to be done, and then it'll send that back to the application. And in that way, we can have these clients, which can be brought online and serviced and uh, rebooted and such, and it doesn't affect the main server. So the main server uh, runs these applications and services, and the transport layer opens up these ports, and the applications communicate to those services on the specific ports, send them data, the server does whatever it needs to do to it, and then sends that data back to the applications. So that's that's how applications work essentially. Um, also, when we go into the transport layer uh, coming up, I'll show you a bit more of that netstat uh, type work and we'll actually take a look at multiple applications running that are like multiple windows of browsers and take a look at the different ports that are used for the same application and why that is and why that makes sense. Uh, we'll get into more depth on that later. But just remember that a daemon and a service are essentially the same thing and they most likely run on a server and then applications run on the client side and they talk to, but they can also run on a server, but in general, for simplicity's sake, the applications on the clients then talk to the server's service, send it the data that it needs to be done, and then it'll receive some sort of result. Uh, so if you're using uh, email in a corporate environment, uh, you know, your client might be running, uh, you know, Outlook or something like that, or, uh, and then it'll communicate to the server which is running an exchange service in a large environment. Uh, and exchange is the internal uh, server that runs all the, all the mail. And then that will 
send the mail back to the client to display on the screen for you, for example. Uh, so we'll get more into more depth on uh, protocols coming up, uh, you know, all the different ones that are out there. I'll list them out for you. Uh, the most common ones that you'll see from day to day and throughout your CCNA, uh, as well as uh, some details about each one. Uh, and then we'll start getting into the transport layer and then uh, give examples of those different um, give examples of the different protocols and services and applications and see them actually in the real world.